A financial plan has three major components, which are cash flow projection, income statement, and balance sheet. A balance sheet contains details about the company's assets and liabilities and shareholder equity at any given point of time. Balance sheet gives important snapshot of the company's capital structure and financial information at any given point of time. And during fundamental analysis of the company, balance sheet can be used to calculate the financial ratios. The balance sheet ratio basically indicates relationship between two items in the balance sheet. These ratios are useful in analyzing the company's financial stability, risks associated, and the expected returns. For example, debt to equity ratio. This ratio basically compares the company's total liabilities with the shareholder equity. It is calculated by dividing the company's total liabilities by its shareholder equity. Basically, it gives information about the degree to which the company is financing its operations based on debt instead of using its own resources. Debt to equity ratio is used to determine the company's financial leverage. The financial leverage means the use of borrowed money, which is the debt, to finance the purchase of assets with the expectation that the income or the capital gain generated from the new asset will exceed the cost of borrowing and there will be net profit. Debt to equity ratio vary depending on the industry. However, there should be a balance as very high debt to equity ratio indicates there is lot of debt that will pose higher financial risk. While low debt to equity ratio is also not good because it doesn't offer the financial leverage thus limiting the profitability. Also one more ratio for example is uh, asset test ratio also known as quick ratio which basically indicates whether the company has the sufficient short term assets to cover its immediate liabilities. This ratio gives information about the financial condition of the company. Quick ratio is calculated by dividing the quick assets that includes cash and account receivable by current liabilities. Another ratio is the working capital ratio or the current ratio. Like the quick ratio, this also looks how well a company can pay its existing debts. However, it considers the current assets rather than simply liquid assets. So current ratio can be calculated by dividing the current assets by current liabilities. Another important ratio is the return on equity ratio. A return on equity ratio basically gauge the company's profitability and also how efficiently the company generates the profit. It is calculated by dividing the net income by shareholder equity. Now for example, a 15% ROE indicates that the company earns Rs 15 on every Rs 100 of its share capital. A return on equity ratio is also known as return on net assets as shareholder equity is equal to company's assets minus its debt. Another interesting ratio is the inventory turnover ratio. This ratio shows how many times a company turned over its inventory in a given period of time with respect to cost of goods sold. For example, consider a company has sold 40 crores of goods in a year while the average inventory for the year is 4 crore. So in this case, inventory turnover ratio will be 10. That means company was able to clear the inventory 10 times in a year or in every 36 days. Well, these were some of the important ratios. However, there are many other ratios that can be computed from the balance sheet that are useful to understand the company's financial health. Another major component of the financial plan is the income statement, which shows how the company has experienced profit and loss over the given period of time, which is generally three months. It is also known as company's P&L statement or pro forma statement. It basically has the information about the cost of goods sold, operating expenses such as rents and utility, amount of net profit and loss and gross margin and also revenue streams which is typically in form of sales. Earning per share which you can find at the bottom of the company's income statement is a measure of company's profitability. It is calculated by dividing the quarterly or annual income minus dividends by the number of outstanding stock shares. The higher the company's EPS is, the greater will be the profit and the value perceived by the investors. In short, we can say earning per share measures the net income that you will receive for each share of the company's stock. Now another important term that could be derived from the earning per share is the price to earning ratio. Price to earning ratio is a valuation metric that is it is the ratio for valuing a company that measures the current share price relative to the earning per share. 
this metric helps investors to assess how expensive a stock is another major component of the financial plan is cash flow projections as the business runs on the cash it gives information about the cash inflow and cash outflow cash flow projection which is also known as cash flow forecast involves estimating the cash coming in and going out based on past business performances it gives information about how much cash is available at any given point of time where it is going and from where it is coming from now once you have understood the basics of the financial plan you can check out various templates for the financial statements and understand how the calculations are done